So once again, my name is Rose and I'm an advisor here on The Hub and also in real life. Um, and today we're talking about SMART goals and we're getting ourselves all set up for 2019, achieving our goals. Um, I think it's gonna be a good year. Uh, just one moment, let me share my screen with you and we'll take a look at our presentation today. All right, so pulling up those resolutions, I want you to kind of think about that resolution that you set for 2019. Um, and resolutions are great. There is nothing wrong with resolutions, but we want to make them a little bit more active. So a uh, kind of startling fact and kind of sad is that 80% of New Year's resolutions uh, fail by February. It is almost February, so I hope you guys have not lost your resolutions just yet. Um, and I think that the biggest issue with resolutions is that they're really good ideas. So there's kind of a difference between an idea and a goal, right? Like one of them's kind of general, it's floating around, it's a nice idea, you can look at it, you can see it, uh, but it's not a goal, there's no action behind it, there's no intention behind it. So these are a couple resolutions that are just kind of ideas. Losing weight, getting better grades, reading more, keeping up with politics, and being mindful. I love all of these ideas, um, but they aren't quite goals. Uh, we don't know how they're going to be achieved. They're not smart. So in addition to goals being uh, more action related than ideas, uh, we're also going to take this one step further and talk about SMART goals. SMART goal is actually an acronym, so we're going to discuss that in just a moment. So a SMART goal is specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So SMART goals take your general ideas and they turn them into something a lot more tangible. So in order to be specific, uh, you want to really pinpoint what you're trying to achieve. So instead of just getting better grades, maybe you have an actual grade or an actual percentage that you want to get and what class it's in. So instead of get better grades, a more specific version would be get an 88% in calculus. That is very specific. We know what it is and it's a clear specific goal. It also needs to be measurable. So you need to be able to know whether or not you reach that goal. Uh, did you do enough to reach it? Do you consider it a success or not? So instead of losing weight, you could say like, well, I just lost one pound. I don't know if that really counts as losing weight or uh, putting a number on it makes it a lot more measurable and you're able to say, yes, I did this thing or no, I didn't do this thing. So you want it to be measurable. You want to give it some numbers that you can actually uh, kind of grade yourself against. It also needs to be attainable. So instead of that idea kind of floating around, that's where I was kind of talking about making it more tangible and making a plan to achieve that goal. So instead of saying that you're going to be mindful, uh, you might make a plan to be mindful in a certain way. This example is practicing mindfulness by downloading the Headspace app and meditating for five minutes every day. So that's really specific. Um, there's a plan uh, to get it done. Um, it could be some other form of mindfulness. It could be uh, going to a yoga class. It's something that you have a plan to actually achieve it. Realistic. Uh, this one's really important. I think a lot of times we kind of set ourselves up for failure. Um, we expect too much of ourselves, especially going into the new year. So you want to be realistic about your lifestyle, your schedule, um, this example here, read 100 books. Well, first of all, it's not very specific. We don't know when it's gonna happen. Like, is this like all year long for 2019? Is this in the first half of 2019? Um, more realistic, read two books per month. It might take a little bit of effort, a little bit of energy to kind of carve out that time to read two books a month, um, but it's realistic. You could actually do it. You're not setting yourself up for failure there. The other thing about this one here, reading two books a month, is it brings into uh, consideration our next part of the SMART goal, which is timely. You want to have a deadline. So that was read two books per month. There's a time attached to it. So it's not just kind of floating out there again. It's not that general idea. Uh, here's another example, running more. That is a great idea. 
Um, not for me, I hate running, but for lots of you guys, I'm sure. Um, but instead of saying that you're just going to run more, give yourself, first of all, that really specific thing, it's a 10K, and then also give yourself a deadline. So deadlines kind of keep us accountable. Um, I think that's another thing with resolutions is that we think about it like for the whole year, that is a really long time. So maybe you break it down a little bit, you give yourself some deadlines in there, and you make it a little bit more likely that you can get that done. All right, we're gonna take a quick little pause here uh, for our attention check. Can you please type in the chat box and tell me what does that M stand for in the SMART goal? So a SMART goal uh, ideally would um, include all five of these SMART components. So the specificness, the measurableness, you guys all got that right, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's realistic, and it's timely. So all of those components have to be in your goal. And that might make it seem like kind of a really long run-on sentence, and that is totally fine. Break it down into two sentences if the grammar bugs you about it. But just include all of those things if you're writing out your goals, try and hit those five components. Uh, here are a couple examples. Um, I'm going to raise my GPA from a 3.3 to a 3.5 by the end of spring semester junior year by attending lunchtime tutoring twice a week, creating Cornell notes for each of my classes, and finishing my homework in the library before going home. So this is really detailed. Um, we have a timeline here going on. It's by the end of spring semester junior year. Uh, we know how it's measured, the 3.3 to the 3.5. Uh, it's specific, raising the GPA. Um, it's attainable, there's a plan in here going on, attending tutoring, doing the Cornell notes, finishing homework before going home. Uh, and it's realistic, it's not raising it from like a 2.5 to a 4.0. It's a, it's a little bit of an increase in a GPA. So I think this is a really great SMART goal, um, very attainable, very specific, good, clear plan. Here's another one. I'm going to lose 10 pounds by June 1st by meal prepping every Sunday and bringing my lunch to campus every day. So I'm assuming that this shift in eating habits is going to make this person a little bit healthier. Um, they have a deadline going on there, so it's timely, June 1st. They have a plan in there, it's attainable. They're meal prepping every Sunday, they're bringing the lunch to campus, it's measurable, they're gonna lose 10 pounds, and it's really specific, so this is a great one as well. Ooh, this is a good one too. I feel like a lot of us could do this. Uh, I'm going to save $50 a month by making coffee at home. Uh, by the end of the year, I'll have $600 saved. So instead of those Starbucks visit every few days, uh, this person's going to save that money, make their own coffee at home. There's a plan in here, making coffee at home, bringing it to work or to school, um, a time uh, goal kind of going on. It's monthly, but it's also looking at the big picture, like that year-long goal, right? So every month they're gonna save $50, and then every year, or by the end of this year, this person will save $600. So we have kind of a short-term version, a long-term version. Um, and it's saving, so it's saving money. So like I was just talking about, that year-long one, that would probably be considered a long-term goal, to save that $600. Uh, we generally think of long-term goals as taking a month, or sorry, a year or more to complete. So those are the big things that are probably kind of overwhelming to think about. Things like paying off student loans, buying a new car, learning a language, saving money for a down payment. I imagine that would take a lot longer than a year. Graduating from medical school, also a lot longer than a year. So these are the big picture things. Um, and if these seem intimidating, that uh, that's fine. I think the important thing is that you know that you can break them down further, maybe turn some of these really big long-term goals into a smaller sets of short-term goals. Short-term goals, generally we think of them taking anywhere from a week or a few days to up to maybe 10 months. Uh, not as long as a year though, that's kind of looking really far ahead. So right now maybe you guys are looking for summer internships, that's a short-term goal. Maybe you're growing your LinkedIn presence. That is a short-term goal. Saving money for spring break, joining a new club, all those kinds of things that you can do a little bit more quickly. Um, but I also want you to think about how your really big long-term goals could be broken down into short-term goals. 
uh, kind of how that financial one was, right? It was $50 per month, $600 in the year. Um, if you're thinking of saving for a new car, it might be similar. You need like $3,000. How can you break that down into monthly things or every couple months you're gonna save a certain amount? So breaking those long-term goals down into short-term goals. Um, so just for a moment, I'm gonna give you a second to maybe think about a resolution or a goal. Maybe identify whether it's more short-term, more long-term, more of an idea or something that you can make a little bit more tangible, a little bit more action related and attainable. Uh, so just give it a thought if you wanna share that with me and see if uh, that makes sense, you're welcome to. Um, let's see, I know there were a couple of questions. So let me take a look at those. And I like some of these resolutions. Uh, just to give you guys some ideas, some brainstorming, some of them are being more patient. Uh, being more involved, um, focusing on career goals, like attending office hours, maybe doing things like informational interviews. So these are really awesome, awesome goals, awesome resolutions for the year. Um, just a moment, my friends. I see one more question here. So, okay, if you are just logging in, then unfortunately you did miss most of the webinar. Um, so it's not going to count for credit. Um, I'm going to launch the post poll. If you have any more questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, for the one of you who is asking about research petitions, um, I'm going to recommend that you reach out to the Ask SRA uh, hub. Um, but in terms of getting those kinds of positions, that'll be something where you might want to use school resources like a career center, um, an intern, they might have like internship opportunities, they might know more about local opportunities for you in terms of research positions. Uh, and so your first step, your first short-term goal might be finding that career center. Your second goal might be applying for different research positions. Um, so just breaking that down, taking it step by step. So you might want to start to kind of write out a plan for yourself. Like, what are you going to do this week to start working towards that goal? All right. I'm going to launch that post poll. Um, I think you guys all know the answers to this. But definitely if you want some more ideas on how to obtain things like internships and research positions, this is a great time to be asking that. This is the time to be applying for those summer positions, even positions for next school year or next fall. Um, so if you wanna reach out, if you are not a rising star, if you're a college student who's just logging in and checking this out, then I would recommend reaching out to the Ask SRA Hub, maybe even looking on the hub at our internship and job boards and looking for some of those opportunities. Also, definitely take advantage of the offices at your school, career centers, things like that. They're gonna know a lot more about the local opportunities for you. All right, well, if that is it, no more questions, then I'm going to log off and this webinar. Thank you all for uh, tuning in, for hanging out with me for a few moments. Um, take care, happy Wednesday, set some goals, and have a good rest of your week and year. Bye guys.